So this is our very first GPU review of 2020, and it's gonna be an interesting one. You see, back at CES, AMD announced the RX 5600 XT, which is priced at $280, and it's supposed to sort of slot between the RX 5500 XT 8 gigabyte and the RX 5700 in their lineup. They showed some specs and had a few performance slides that showed it beating the NVIDIA's GTX 1660 Ti by a pretty convincing margin, and that means it could also go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the RTX 2060. So guess what happened? Nvidia decided to lower their price of their RTX 2060 to $300. But good luck actually finding one for that price. Also, things take a little bit of an interesting turnaround for AMD because they pulled a last minute trigger on everyone who knew the specs of the 5600 XT because last week they rolled out an official BIOS that increased board power, core frequencies, and memory speeds, and the effect on performance it's pretty drastic. So we needed to scramble since our 5600 XT testing was already done. Uh, and I'm pretty sure Nvidia is scrambling too at the moment since they have nothing that can compete. Also, there's more to that. And of course we have to get into the benchmarks, but first a quick message from our sponsor. The Landcool 2 Enclosure by Lian Li is the $89 case to beat that packs a lot of features with user-friendly assembly and high-performance functionality in mind, like dual TG side panels with separate shroud doors for easy access to the included hard drive cage. The interior is well-equipped for cable management and EATX motherboards once you flip the cable bar, while the back section is covered with panels for best visuals. The top is also airflow-ready with multi-lane fan installation, but this front fan bracket is next level with four positions available to suit your cooling style. Check out the Landcool 2 by Lee and Lee down below. All right, so let's start things off with the specs. Since even without the new BIOS, the RX 5600 XT was a pretty interesting card. Basically, it uses the same Navi 10 GPU core, which is also found on the RX 5700, and it even has the same number of stream processors, texture units, and ROPs. The real difference is where lower clock speeds and a 192-bit memory interface instead of a 256-bit one on the RX 5700. Some people thought that pricing was a little bit too high at $280, uh, since even though the 5700 XT officially cost 350, you could pick it up for between 320 and 340. But then the new BIOS happened. And what did that do? Well, the power limit was increased by about 10 watts. The game clock, which is where the GPU will spend most of its time, jumped up by almost 200 megahertz. The boost clock got a nice bump as well, but the biggest surprise was the memory. That shot up from 12 gigabits per second to 14 gigabits per second. Not only that, but AMD's board partners like Sapphire, XFX, and PowerColor are taking things even further with their overclocked versions. So let's take a look at this, for example. This is the Sapphire Pulse. 5600 XT. Its game clock goes even further to 1615 megahertz, and for those of you keeping track, that's 240 megahertz higher than the RX 5600 XT was supposed to hit. The boost clock hits up to 1750 megahertz, and those specs get really, really close to the stock RX 5700. There's also a silent BIOS, which is pretty pointless since the card is whisper quiet with its performance BIOS setting. So how much did this new BIOS actually affect performance? Let's take a look at the 5600 XT Pulse from Sapphire, because remember, this is a pre-overclock GPU, but right now it is running at those speeds that I just showed. You can actually see that in these games, there's a pretty significant boost in frame rates, but right across every title we tested, the performance increase was somewhere between 12% all the way up to 20%, depending on how well the game reacted to those clock speeds. That really changed the ARC 5600 XT's outlook. However, there is one little issue. You see, the new BIOS was rolled out at the very last moment, and so the first batch of shipments to retailers won't have them installed. And that's messed up because buyers will have to find the new BIOS and the updating tool from their respective manufacturer's website and uh, flash it themselves. So if you have an RX 5600 XT, its out-of-the-box performance won't be anywhere closer to what you're gonna be seeing in the benchmarks, and that kind of sucks, but it's great to see what a BIOS update can do to the performance, but this almost feels like a bit of a bait and switch by AMD. I mean, it's great to see or great to show awesome results and reviews, but you guys won't be able to get those numbers without jumping through a few hoops first. Not only that, but it's impossible to figure out if a card has an updated BIOS until you get it home and run AMD's update tool. This could be a huge mess, guys, and I'm hoping AMD and their partners make this process very clear. Speaking of their partners, let's quickly take a look at the Sapphire Pulse 5600 XT. Basically, it looks like all other Pulse GPUs, and that means it has two large fans and a super compact heatsink. It's only 10 inches long and takes up two slots, so nothing extreme here. 
I love the fact that Sapphire doesn't feel like they need the biggest GPU on the block to look cool. This thing is clean, good looking, and it should fit into most compact cases without any problems. There's even a back plate to complete the overall look, and cut into that is a small bio switch that I talked about before. For those of you wondering, the position closest to the IO connectors has the performance BIOS, which is what we use for testing, while the position towards the power input holds a silent profile. That one has lower clock speeds, reduced fan speeds, and runs at minimal power envelope. As for power input, there's an 8-pin connector, and that's about it. But anyways, let's move on to the results. For this test, I'll be using the RTX 2060 Founders Edition, the ASUS GTX 1660 Ti OC, EVGA's GTX 1660 Super Black Gaming, a Sapphire RX 5700 Pulse Overclocked, or OC, and finally the RX 5600 XT Pulse. Meanwhile, this is the rest of the benchmarking setup. As for the results, let's kick things off with Call of Duty, and right away, the RX 5600 XT is absolutely dominating the RTX 2060, and almost comes close to the RX 5700 too. In CSGO, the Nvidia cards do come out on top, especially with their 1% lows, but it should be noted we were experiencing some CPU bottlenecking here. Even though the AMD GPUs have better overall averages, I'd actually choose an Nvidia card for Fortnite since they deliver a much smoother experience. Jedi Order shows what's really amazing about the 5600 XT. It's almost able to match the RX 5700 in many cases. Outer Worlds really seems to favor Nvidia cards when it comes to averages, but the RX 5600 XT delivers a much more playable experience without constant stuttering, especially when compared to the GTX 1660 cards. In Overwatch, we're back again to RX 5600 XT domination, where it clearly beats the RTX 2060 and leaves the GTX 1660 Super in the dust. Rainbow Six Siege is one game that actually benefits from the RX 5700's 8GB of memory, especially with the HD tech texture pack, but the RX 5600 XT is still super competitive against the RTX 2060. The fact we got Red Dead Redemption running at all is a miracle, guys, but here, the 5600 XT is right where we would expect it to be. As for Tomb Raider, yeah, the RX 5600 XT is leading the RTX 2060 again, but moving on to Warhammer 2, and it's pretty evident that this is a tough game on any system. The 5600 XT really struggles to compete on 1% lows, but overall frame rates are pretty good. And guess what we're back at with our charts, guys? That's right, Witcher 3. And it's here mostly as a reminder to check out the awesome series and to go back and enjoy this amazing game. Now, you can also be confident that the RX 5600 XT is more than good enough to play the game as well. And finally, we're on to power consumption. And I have to admit, even with the higher clock speeds, the 5600 XT manages to be pretty efficient GPU when compared to the RTX 2060. The problem with that card is all the extra die space used for ray tracing and AI components that ends up having a negative impact on efficiency. But honestly, it looks like we might have a low leakage core on our 5600 XT, but we'll only be able to confirm that with more samples. Either way, I think this is a huge win for AMD since they've struggled to compete with Nvidia from a performance per watt standpoint, but now they won big in almost every way. Well guys, AMD did it again with the 5600 XT. Now sure, the last minute change didn't allow us to run all the benchmarks that we wanted to, and I'm sure it's gonna run or cause a lot of issues for buyers who'd have to go through the process of updating the BIOS to get expected performance. But I have to say that at $290, this GPU is really, really good because even at the performance setting, it runs super quiet, super efficient, and it offers tons of performance at 1080p. Now, Nvidia did try to compete by lowering the price of the RTX 2060 to $300, but keep in mind that that's the Founders Edition and it's suspiciously sold out. So even if you were to find one at that price point, it's really difficult for me to recommend that GPU over something like this. So here's the deal, plain and simple. If you want an awesome card for 1080p gaming and you can afford it, the RX 5600 XT is a massive improvement over the GTX 1660 Super. In some cases, it almost hits RX 5700 performance levels, although that causes some problems for the 5700, but that card's extra memory can come in handy for some games. Sure, they took a while to release this thing, but right now I feel like they did a really good job for gamers who can actually buy this thing at a really affordable price point. And I can't wait to see what they have planned out for the rest of 2020. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out some relevant content over here. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.